Thanks for watching. In this video, I'll go over the Voxelab Polaris, an entry level LCD UV resin 3D printer. At $233 on Amazon.ca, it is just about the least expensive resin printer you can buy. So, what do you get for less than $250? Let's take a look. First of all, the specs. The Polaris matches the specs of other entry level resin printers on the market, including a 5.5 inch masking LCD with 2K resolution. Being the lower model, this is a color LCD and you can step up to the Proxima to get a monochrome screen. For those not familiar with resin printers, this sounds a bit odd, but the way these printers work means that a monochrome masking LCD works better, and they're actually more expensive, as they're much less common than the color LCD screens that are used on phones. But back to the Polaris. On top of that LCD sits the resin tray, and the build platform which is mounted on a single linear rail with 155 millimeters of build height. The build platform itself is extremely well made with thick aluminum and installed on a ball mount for easy platform leveling. To level it, all you need to do is loosen up two set screws on the ball mount, lower the platform down to the screen with a piece of paper as a spacer, and tighten the set screws back up once the platform is flat and firm on the paper. Up front, you control the printer using the 3.5 inch touchscreen. There's a single USB port on the side to connect to the printer or to insert a memory stick with your models to print. I don't like looking for the USB port on the side, so I just got a little extension cable to make it more convenient. There are no networking capabilities built into this printer. If you're new to resin printing, don't forget that you'll need to get a few other things other than the printer itself before you can get started printing. Most importantly, you need to get some resin, as the printer doesn't come with any, not even a sample bottle. I've opted to use water-soluble resin, so I don't have to deal with alcohol. Which brings me to the second point, which is you need a washing and curing solution. You can splurge and get yourself an all-in-one wash and cure machine, like the one I have, or you can spend a lot less for plastic Tupperware and a little UV lamp. The decision is yours. Finally, you need to deal with resin, and that means be prepared for a bit of mess, so make sure you have some paper towels ready. Preferably, you have a well-ventilated room so the fumes don't build up, and if not, you should consider an air purifier. Now let's see what this printer can do. If you've only dealt with FDM and it's your first time seeing a resin print, be prepared to be blown away because the details are an order of magnitude above what FDM can achieve. This here is a fairly challenging test piece from Amero Labs. I didn't get the settings quite right on the first try, and you see that there's a lot of defects. But the second one came out pretty well. Now, look how small this piece is, and the fine details are really amazing. For example, check out the cross with the tiny circle that came out perfectly, or that little point inside there under the arch. And the other side, you can see just the tiny spacing slots down to fractions of a millimeter. Here's another example, a lithophane nightlight, which unfortunately I damaged a bit while removing from the platform. Nonetheless, there's no signs of layer lines, no contour lines, and the result is nearly photographic. So in conclusion, the Polaris works really well for an entry-level resin printer. Is a great way to get into the different type of 3D printing and see if it's for you. Yes, dealing with resin is a bit messy and you also need to consider the washing and curing steps, but when it comes out right, the results are really impressive, especially when you consider the low cost of this machine. In fact, you'll likely be hard pressed to spot the difference with a higher priced machine.